Hello, how are you guys doing? It's good not to be alone. I can see a couple of surfaces around. <laughs> Maybe we will convince you to switch. Hope. <laughs> All right, so. All right, so um, first of all, I am not here as a Microsoft employee that happens to be an Adventist. I'm here as an Adventist that happens to work at Microsoft. <laughs> so, <laughs> so let's that, make that clear. Okay. All right, so it's very good to be here. I mean, it's fantastic to hear about all the work that, that the Adventist Church is doing. Uh, and we're going to present some of the tools that, we, that Microsoft has, because I love Microsoft, and our hope is that you will see Microsoft in a new light. We, the company has changed a lot over the, the past three or four years. Uh, the culture has changed a lot, so hopefully the things that you're gonna see will make you think about looking at our services, our software, and see how they can make your, your uh, work at the church uh, go the way that you want. So with that in mind, let's take a look. We'll look at four things. We'll look at Office. We'll look at Azure. We will do a quick look at Visual Studio and also at Windows. So it's a lot of content, so I'll try to go quickly. So Office 365, what is Office? I mean, a lot of people use Office. Office is used today, but by more than a billion people in the world. It's the most used client uh, application uh, in business. Now, Office was traditionally for the, uh, for the enterprise, right? So you go to your office, you open your computer, you do your stuff, right? And then you go home and you forget about it. This doesn't work anymore in the modern workplace. It doesn't work anymore in the modern schools. People are mobile now, so Office has to move along. So we made a bunch of changes. Uh, a lot of them came up on the last year. So we saw a lot of new applications coming up for the iPhones, for the iPads, for Androids. We also saw major upgrades to the Windows versions and to the Macintosh versions. So the idea with the installed applications, the ones that you carry on your computer, even if you're offline, if you're, if you're disconnected, is that now you have the choice of using the devices that you love, and I mean Windows phones, right? Um, okay, you have your iPhones, that's okay too. <laughs> so, but you can choose. I mean, gone are the days where Microsoft had that vision that, hey, you have to be using Windows, right? That, that's gone, that doesn't work anymore. So we have to go where people are, right? So coming back to the idea that like if, if we try to bring people in, unidirectional doesn't work. We have to go out. And that's what we did. So that's for the desktop applications, the mobile applications. But not everybody has Microsoft. Not everybody has Microsoft accounts. So when you are in your enterprise and you look at Office and you see, oh, I like this, I'm gonna use it, right? Now you are collaborating with other people that maybe they don't use Microsoft products. Maybe they, maybe they use like Google Apps or some of, of the other uh, competitors. That is okay too. Collaboration is about humans, it's not about software. So using Office 365, Microsoft provides you with the, with the online tools where you can share documents, you can collaborate, you can edit, sometimes even in real time even with people that don't normally use uh, Office. They can use all these, uh, they can edit all these documents, they can view all these documents using our hosted solutions. That means that anybody with a browser can collaborate with people that use Office normally. Now, other things that come with Office 365, it's a suite of, of software, right? So it's many softwares that we brought together trying to do something that is bigger than ourselves. So, uh, the main component in Office 365 is an Exchange mailbox. Exchange is our email server. Uh, it's used by a lot, a lot of companies. 
So we put it online so that you don't have to invest in an infrastructure in your own company to have these services. You buy the service, uh, we provide you with mailboxes, and on top of those mailboxes, we provide a lot of services. So for example, a traditional problem that people used to have is sharing attachments, right? It's a very common thing. You create a, a, a document, you create a presentation, or maybe a spreadsheet, and now you want to share with people and you want to get comments on them. And traditionally what will happen is you will send these attachments out. People will make comments on them and then send you back. And now you had this very annoying job of merging everything together, putting everything back into one reasonable document that you will then say, oh, this is the final one, please nobody touch this anymore, right? So the new Office 365, this is something that we release uh, over the last month or so in general, right? Uh, now you, we have this concept of smart attachments. So when you send an attachment today, uh, you have the choice of saying, Put this attachment into my SharePoint. Put this attachment into my OneDrive. Those are cloud storage solutions that we integrate with your mailbox, with your Outlook. And now, what we do is, when you send this attachment, we will automatically figure out this, the permissions. We will automatically figure out where people live and how they will access this document. So now, when they open this, they receive this on their email, they can edit, they can, they can view, they can edit, they can add their comments, and it all goes back automatically to this one document, and you don't have to do any work. So that was a pretty cool thing that, that came up last year. So other things that we have around Office 365, uh, we have solutions for Skype. So we mentioned already that Skype was bought by Microsoft some years ago. So it's also integrated with Office. Uh, there's very deep integrations now with, uh, with your Outlook so that you can start conversations directly from Outlook. You don't have to be jumping around these different programs anymore. And there are some other programs around video. So if you are a company and you have internal videos that you don't want to publish on to YouTube, for example, you can have this portal where all your videos, your training material, maybe like company meetings, you can have them all internal, secure. Same thing we have with Yammer. Yammer is a social network or a social, <laughs> how do you call it? Not a network, but a social media, right? So this is again for, for the enterprise, for your company, uh, you don't have to be doing all your communications on the open where maybe you want to dis have discussions that are for things that are still internal and you don't want people from the outside seeing. Uh, we have solutions for that as well. Now, perhaps the most interesting one is Delve. Delve is a, it's a new product that we introduced a couple of years ago that builds in something that we call the office graph. So when you have an Office 365 account uh, and, and people in your company or in your church or in your ministry are using this, we build what we call the Office Graph. And what happens is this. So it starts with you and all the interactions that you have. So maybe the people that you work with, like your manager, your direct reports, and the things that you do with Office. So for example, the messages that you send, the events that you, that you create, uh, the tasks that you have, right? The groups, so Office 365 also introduced a new concept that we call the groups, and groups aggregates a bunch of stuff. Everything that, that you can do as an individual, you can also do as a group. So now groups can also have conversations and, and documents and notes uh, attached to them. And as you interact with the system, we collect all these things, and we build the office graph. And what happens at that point is, as this thing grows, you can make queries against it. And you can discover documents and people that maybe you did not even know about. So this happened to me as I was preparing this, this presentation. Williams asked me to, to come and talk to you guys, and I was freaking out for a couple of days 
thinking, hey, I, I, what am I going to tell these people? They probably know all this, and they know more than I do because they actually run this. I just write it, right? So I don't know anything about it. So I went to our system, and I asked for the Office 365 uh, sales pitches, right? And I got inundated by a bunch of the documents that all of our, our marketing guys uh, published, right? So pretty soon I had a lot of documents in my hand. I had contacts and people that I, didn't I had never heard about in Microsoft, and I was able to now interact with them and, and ask them, hey, I'm going to do a presentation. What are, what are the key points that I should make? And so it's very good for people that are coming into a new project or for a new hire so that they can discover the information that you have inside your network and, and learn more about the things and get the information that they want. So this was a, a quick introduction into Office. Um, I don't have time to go into the very details. So if you, are, if you want to learn more, take a peek at this address or come talk to us. I am here with another couple guys, Abel and Lyndon. So come talk to us. We can go a little bit deeper onto these things. So this is for our collaboration. So now Azure. What is Azure? Azure is our public cloud uh, solution. It's a public, it's open, and a, sec a secure public cloud. And it's composed of many, many different services uh, that they range from networking, uh, they range to virtual machines, data storage, uh, media services. They also do uh, analytics and, and a lot of other services. Like the last time I counted, we have uh, over 50 uh, services inside Azure. Now, Azure runs in 22 uh, data centers around the globe. And this is an ever-growing number as well. Maybe by the time I finish, they might have another one. So uh, now, when you talk about cloud, uh, there is a very big concern. I mean, there, you have many different solutions. Then you have many different cloud providers. So the question, and, and, and this is just a, like a quick illustration of some of the services we have. Uh, so the question is, why should I choose one cloud provider over the other, right? So some things that we like to think on, on Azure as being the, the good things is that uh, you can get things done a lot faster on the cloud than if you were to have to do it in your own, on your own premises, right? So every once in a while, maybe you need, to, you need to have a very powerful machine to do some computation, right? Instead of having to go through some process order, buy some hardware, bring it in, you can quickly just go to the cloud, get the resources you need, and get going and get your job done. And it's very, like I say, it's very open in the sense that we run very different types of, of operating systems. So we have Linux machines, we have Windows machines, and you can pick the ones that you need to get your job done. Uh, we have things like SQL or NoSQL and MySQL, and you can just bring all the solutions that you need. Uh, in terms of uh, uh, programming, uh, Azure is, is also very broad. Uh, you can use any programming language to talk to this. And the idea is that you don't want to be doing manual work with a cloud provider. You want to be doing programming against it because the, the benefit of cloud programming is to reduce your uh, cloud providers, is to reduce your cost. And you reduce your cost by using it just the exact amount that you want and just for the time that you need. So the, the, the good idea is that you will write these programs, you will instantiate the resources that you want, use them, throw them away so that you don't overpay, right? Um, another benefit of Azure that is a little bit more unique to Microsoft is that you can bring uh, your own data center uh, into Azure, or, your, or and the reverse, you can bring Azure into your own data center. So we'll talk a little bit more about this a little bit later. And of course, I mean, when you go to the cloud, there's always the worry of, hey, what happens with my data now, right? So when it's in your box, you, you control it, you, you kind of keep it closed. When you put it out there, now there's the worry of like, oh, what can happen with this data? 
So we take that very seriously, and, and Microsoft has four very strong commitments that we built into every single service because that's how we build trust, and that's how you do it. Uh, so with the first commitment that we have is that we will keep your data secure. We will work with uh, the industries, we will work with law enforcement, and we work with uh, many different uh, providers to ensure that your data is secure. We will also, uh, your data is private, and, we, and it's always under your control. So it's your data, it's not our data. You can take it anywhere. You, uh, we don't use your data, for example, for advertising or to figure out what kind of ads to show. And we also try to provide you with as much privacy control as we can possibly do, can. And of course, you can always take your data in and out whenever you want. This is, it's always your data. Uh, we were also the first provider that was recognized by the European Union to, uh, to be committed and, and comply with all the privacy laws that they have. And we will also manage uh, your data in accordance to the law of every country. So this is something, again, you as a company, you as an individual, you don't have to worry. We go and we figure out the laws that apply to each, each uh, country and, and do the work for you. But above all, uh, we will be transparent. We will tell you uh, what is being done with your data. We will, you will also know where your data resides, who has access to it. And we will always give you visibility into our own service. Uh, there's a financial agreement in some of our services where if we don't meet our SLA, you get paid back. So that's a nice thing because it gives you the peace of mind that, hey, this thing has to work for my, my critical uh, workflows. So that's Azure. Again, quickly, I have to move along. Again, come, back, come talk to us if you want to learn more, see what are the services that we have and how they can uh, be used by, by your particular solutions. Now, uh, software development is an art, and every artist needs a, a, a brush, right? So for us, it, it, it comes to the Visual Studio family. And the Visual Studio family is composed of, of many different uh, tools. Uh, the three more important that I will touch today is Visual Studio 2015. That's our IDE. This is what we use to program. Uh, virtually everybody at Microsoft, all the software that we write, we end up using uh, Visual Studio as our primary interface. Uh, Visual Studio Team Services is a cloud-based solution where where you can store your code. So again, you don't need to store your code in your local, uh, the, your local environment. You can live this on the cloud, uh, where we also have all the project management, team management solutions, uh, bug tracking, continuous integration. So the idea is that when you use these cloud solutions, uh, you can take your idea from your mind to your, to your code into your production service quickly. Right? Uh, Visual Studio Code is a new lightweight editor. So the Visual Studio 2015 is, you have to pay, it's big, very, very powerful. Visual Studio Code is on the other side, it's very lightweight, but still uh, very dedicated and, and, and very extensible uh, so that people can write these modern web applications uh, very easily. Uh, Visual Studio Code in particular is multi-platform, so it runs in Windows, it runs in the Mac OS, and runs in Linux as well. And that kind of shows the, the shift in culture that we have. Uh, you saw like in Azure, we are willing to run uh, pla other platforms like Linux, the, before it was like forbidden, now that is gone, we, we bring it in, we use it, whatever makes it work for you. Uh, the other shift in culture, like in Visual Studio, uh, the Visual Studio Code, we are, run, we are running our stuff in other platforms. Like the same thing with the Office mobile apps, everywhere now, right? Uh, another, another thing that I want to point is that there is also, for everything that we have 
that is paid, there is also a free version that you can try things on, right? So we have these things that if you search for it, it's called the Visual Studio Dev Essentials. It gives you free, free IDEs, free Azure credits, and the idea is that you can go, if you have an idea for an application, for some service, for some solution, you can try it out for free. And then if it makes sense and it pans out, then you can go and, and do it and, and pay. So for cross-platforms, uh, Visual Studio integrates with a bunch of tools, in, a, in particular Apache and Xamarin and Unity. These are three engines that allow you to write cross-platform code for all the three major uh, mobile apps. And Xamarin was just yesterday we, uh, we announced that we are going to integrate into Microsoft. We acquired that company, which is nice. <laughs> so uh, Visual C++ is also an option. Um, open source, we are now willing to contribute to open source, and we also take open source contributions. Uh, the biggest one probably is around uh, ASP and the .NET Core. And the idea is that you can now write applications uh, using these frameworks that run both in, in Windows and Linux and on the Mac. And so using the, the Microsoft stack, you can, you can deploy it anywhere. So again, this was a quick tour on Visual Studio. And lastly, Windows. Uh, Windows phones, OK, maybe still not the most popular ones. But Windows devices, we, we ended 2015 with 200 million devices upgraded to Windows 10 already. So this is going to our 1 billion in two, three years that they want to have. So uh, the, great, uh, the great idea with Windows 10 is that you have this one converged platform. So you have the exact same operating system running from the very tiny Internet of Things devices to your phones, to your tablets, to your desktop computers and then also on the Xbox and some new products like the Microsoft Hub, which is a conferencing solution, and to the HoloLens. So now, as a developer, you can think about writing an app using uh, Azure and using Visual Studio. You can, you can already make it uh, cross-platform, and then you can also target the Windows devices and Windows phones. And, and reach those uh, million use, uh, 100, 200 million users that are there already. Uh, HoloLens presents a very new and, and, and different solution, right? So imagine, for example, uh, being able to go, let's say, like the LNG White uh, Museum in, in Battle Creek and, and putting on a HoloLens and then maybe interacting with the hol uh, holograms of pioneers and seeing the church history in a different light, for example. So some ideas that, that could come out of that. Uh, some people are, are always concerned about security. It's a very imminent threat these days. Every day you see something about security. And Windows, of course, has many different, uh, Windows 10 in particular, has many different uh, new features to protect your identity, protect the data that you, that you produce and you store on it, and protect the devices where it's running. So recently, uh, the Department of Defense announced that they're going to be rolling uh, Windows 10 for 4 million uh, seats. So that shows how uh, committed to security we are, so that the Department of Defense will, will take that. So uh, to complete, uh, there's Windows Server. It's, again, built on the same core. Both Windows 10 and Windows Server, they all share the same code base. And it's the same code base that we use to build Azure. So everything that we learn while we're building Azure, while we're building Office, while we're building Visual Studio, it comes all back into the operating system, and it comes all back to you. Um, this virtualization is it's, it's key. This day and age, everything that you do is on the cloud. These are running on virtual machines. The idea is that now you can also bring those things back into your own data center when you wish, and you can use the same Azure stack inside your own premises if you want. And probably the coolest thing is that nano server thing there. Uh, this is pet peeve of mine. What we did there is that we took everything out of Windows, and we made it boot with the very minimal operating system that we could, and that greatly reduces the cost of your, of your virtual machines. So if you're into virtual machines, go take a look at Nano Server. It's pretty cool. 
And did I mention virtualization? I mean, that's really key to everything that we do these days. So again, this was just a quick introduction. We don't have time to go deep into these things, but we'll be here and uh, come talk to us and see where Microsoft can, can help you and how we can help your, your, your church work. Thank you.